Welcome back. So in this lesson, I want us to begin working on our client um, rate limiter. And so to do that, uh, we will update our rate limiter uh, function. Okay, so if we think about it, we need to keep track of the IP address for the client and we also need to have a rate limiter that is assigned specifically to that client. So if we have five clients, we should have five rate limiters so that each rate limiter can keep track of the number of requests that that particular user um, is issuing. And so we will remove this global, um, in essence, global rate limiter. We don't need that anymore. We want to create um, a rate limiter for every client. So I will declare a couple of variables. One of them will be the map. So clients, and I'm gonna make a map. And the key will just be a string, which will be the IP address of the client and the value will be a rate limiter okay okay so I have my clients which is a map but because I could have multiple go routines trying to access this map at any given moment I need to have some coordination so to ensure that we write um, or we work with the rate limiter correctly, we will use a mutex. So the mutex will allow me to have some control as to how we allow the goroutines to access our map. All right, so whenever you're dealing with maps, you always need a mutex uh, to coordinate with the map. Okay. So we have our mutex and we have our map. So what we're going to do next is to get the IP address of the client. So let's replace this and we will get the IP address of the request. Okay, so to do that, I will use the um, split okay, from the net package. So net that split host port. And what this, um, by the way, we'll need to import the um, net package. So if you come up here, uh, we'll see that it has been imported for me, right? So net. And so what this uh, function does it allows you to get the IP address of a request. Okay, so what I need to put in here is the request. So I could simply say R that, and I could use the remote addre address uh, variable or attribute. And what it does, it says uh, remote ADDR returns a string and what it does it allows you to record the network address that sent the request exactly what we need and so we will give that to the split host port and we will save the ip portion and the error i do not care about the second return value which is the port okay i don't need the port all i want is the ip address or, as we call it, the host. All right, so let's move that. Once I have that, let's check for error. So if error not nil, then I know something went wrong. And so I will just uh, say server error response. And then, of course, I will need to return. Now, 
assuming that there were no errors, then I will need to lock the map. So let's lock. Okay. So I will simply say uh, mu dot lock. And so once you have it locked, we can perform our processing on that map. And so what do I want to do with the map? I want to check if the IP address, IP, um, is in the map. If it's not in there, I want to add it. And this is a common pattern that we do if you want to check to see if some key is in the map. Okay, and we use the variable found, which is a common name. So what we do, uh, we will simply try to access that uh, item, that key. Okay, so we're going to try to access IP. And if it's not found, then of course, um, it will return false. Okay, it will return false. So that's the first thing I do. And then I will check if not found, meaning if false, then I know it's not in there. And so if it's not in there, I will just add it. And so I will simply say clients IP. Then I will now create a rate that new limiter. And I will initialize it with two for the rate and four for the B. Okay. So that's what I want to do. Now, once I have done that, I will now proceed to check to see if um, there is still room for the request. Okay. And so let's uh, check if request allowed. Okay. So if this is the first time for the client, then the first request, then we'll add that client. Um, and then of course, uh, we now have that client in the map. Now, if it's a previous client, then of course this would be skipped. And we, but in any case, doesn't matter if it's new or it's a returning client, we will end up at this exact position where we will check to see if, okay, not clients IP dot allow, right? Again, uh, if you recall, the allow function will return true if it's allowed, if the request is allowed, or false if not, okay? And so, um, I will simply uh, do that. Now, if it's not allowed, if it's false, right? Remember, allow returns a bool. So if it's false, what does that mean? It means that the client cannot uh, have or issue any more request. Or this request that the client is trying to issue cannot be honored because um, there is no more um, available room for this request. Or they have used up they've used up all their allotted requests. And so what do I want to do? Well, the first thing I want to do is to actually remove the lock, which will give other Go routines a chance to access the map. I don't need to access the map anymore because I no longer, uh, well, I don't need to lock the map anymore because I no longer need access to it. And why don't I need access? Well, because there's nothing else for me to do. I already have my answer, whether the request limit has been reached or not. And so if it's false, meaning that the, the limit has been reached, then of course, I immediately release the lock. Oops, let's so unlock. And after I release the lock, then I know I will simply say, up that rate limit exceeded w r right and then 
I will simply um, return. All right. Now, if I find out that this is true, then of course this will be skipped. And if it's skipped, it means that the request can be honored. And so we'll move on or call the next handler in our sequence. All right, and that's it. So let's just start our server uh, to make sure we didn't break anything. Okay, great, still works. Now, there are a few things that we need to keep in mind and we will do that in the next um, video, but I want to introduce it now, right here. The way we have our map set up, every client um, that hits our API will be registered in the map. So we're going to have an entry in the map for every client. And each of those clients will have also a rate limiter. All right. So obviously, you will notice that um, as your server um, stays online and, and keeps running, this map will grow really, really, really large. And so to avoid this, uh, we will need to do some kind of um, pruning or culling of our map, whereby we will need to see um, if there are clients who haven't really um, made requests for some certain time, we would want to remove them from the map. So in the next lesson, uh, we'll look at how we can maintain the map so that it does not grow um, unbounded. All right, I'll see you in that next lesson.